cooling a 500 plus horsepower big block in an engine compartment designed for 80 horsepower is a challenge, but achievable. Start with getting the heat out of the engine compartment. Ford engineers knew that was critical. Our street rod has the standard type Ford louvered hood side. If a different look is desired, at least use multiple hot rod louvers. Another path for the air to leave the engine compartment is the tapered section of the lower firewall. Some bodybuilders use a straight, not tapered section. The tapered shape helps pull the hot air out when the car is moving. A Griffin all aluminum radiator was selected for the 34. Although aluminum has a lower conductivity than copper, the tubes can be made long, narrow, and more efficient. Ours uses two rows of one and a quarter inch deep tubes. Copper radiators are also soldered with lead, which has only 10% the conductivity of copper. The Griffin design incorporates a separate overflow tank in the top section. It has a trans cooler, but a separate trans cooler was employed to reduce the radiator heat load. It has a threaded hole for the temperature sensor used with our electric fans. Since there are no off-the-shelf rubber hoses for this custom installation, stainless hoses provide an excellent, very functional solution. All possible cooling was needed, so a high-pitched six-blade aluminum mechanical fan was installed on the engine. Sure it takes some power, but there's no problem cooling when traveling in 95 degree weather. A fan shroud is needed to make the mechanical fan efficient. This aluminum one is from Griffin, designed for the radiators. The opening was cut to match the fan location. With the small space available in the 34 and the vintage air condenser covering the full radiator, decided to add electric pusher fans in the front of the condenser and radiator. A 10 inch fan fit at the bottom, but reduced clearance at the top allowed only an 8 inch fan. Since hot water enters the top of the radiator, a fan at that location is most effective. The fans are controlled with a the thermostat and a high current relay. We also paralleled the thermal switch with a toggle switch controlled at the dash. The only time they are needed is on very hot days when idling, so the switch is flipped before the temperature rises. This data helps to make the decision on the coolant type. No plain water has the highest heat capacity and conductivity. Why not just use plain water? Well, for one, it freezes. However, a 25 to 33 percent glycol is sufficient to reduce freezing temperatures to plus 10 degrees. Good enough for a garage car in the south. Note the boiling point with a 25 percent mixture is almost the same as a 50-50 mixture. With a 15 psi pressure cap, it will not boil until it reaches 250 degrees. Note the freezing point of pure antifreeze is the same as a 25% mixture. It needs to be mixed with water to lower that temperature. Be sure to use a thermostat. It helps prevent cavitation in the water pump which causes boiling. If a high flow Robert Shaw thermostat is used, it will allow all the flow the pump can generate. The boiling point of 25% glycol antifreeze and 75% water will increase from 218 degrees to 250 degrees at 15 psi. Be sure to use a pressure cap. A very interesting way was found to significantly reduce temperature while idling. Ignition timing. This 1977 Peterson publication defines why distributor vacuum advance went from using manifold vacuum to what is called ported vacuum. The ported vacuum is located above the butterfly, so when they are closed at idle, no vacuum, no extra advance. This all occurred in the 1960s to lower NOx pollution. The publication discusses the special valve used in many late 60s, early 70s cars to switch from ported to manifold vacuum when temperatures were excessive. This lowered the temperature. The test made on a 95 degree day with the 34, coolant temperature was reduced by 10 degrees using manifold vacuum that added 10 degrees more advance. The Peterson publication mentions the fact 
that combustion is kept in the upper cylinder walls as a reason for the reduced temperatures. With two air conditioning hoses and two large water lines located in the small engine compartment, this homemade bracket routes them neatly on the upper hood support. It was made from one inch thick aluminum and polished. It comes apart in sections to capture the various diameter hoses. Four hoses enter the interior using a vintage air bulkhead fitting. This keeps the firewall very clean. Even the air conditioning dryer was installed under the dash. This B&M transmission supercooler mounts under the car on the frame. Welded a bracket and fabricated a duct and deflector to assure air flows through the cooler. And fittings and braided stainless lines handle the pressure. We used our 150 amp MIG welder for many items on the street rod. The argon based shielding gas comes from a large cylinder chained to the wall. To reduce the blast of gas at the weld start, we use our gas saver system the first use of this patented system. It makes the gas cylinder last over twice as long and improves our weld start quality. It simply replaces the gas delivery hose. The patented gas saver system is a simple inexpensive gas delivery hose with a small ID and a peak flow limiting orifice. It reduces wasted stored gas by over 80%. It retains a system pressure to supply enough start gas to purge the weld start area and to compensate for flow restrictions that occur while we're welding. It has no moving parts to set or wear. Thousands are in use in industry. For much more information about cooling a street rod, visit netwelding.com slash keep-cool.htm. Thank you.